So, welcome everybody. Um, we just did introductions and a lot of you already answered my fir first question of, you know, what platforms are you using? And it sounds like everybody's on Facebook and there's a lot of interest in Instagram if you don't already have it. And I think um, as we go through this, you'll see that's like the perfect combination because you can actually control both of them out of one platform, which is wonderful, or but at either of them, you can go back and forth between the two. So you don't really have to have ex extreme experience in one or the other, just making sure that your accounts are connected um, will work great. So um, having never done a training before on social media, when I asked Marcy, what would you like me to talk about? And she said, if you were a volunteer, what would you want to know? So that's where I started with information. Um, if at any point you have questions, though, don't hesitate to ask, interrupt, or um, post them in the chat, and I'll do my best to watch that as well. Um, so we talked about the platforms, and you, some of you also talked about what you're looking to attract, whether it's just actually getting more numbers out there, maybe it's attracting to your group um, as far as volunteers or actually post. So um, my first, I love stats. So who's out there in the world? Uh, this is the number of users, not, um, we personally don't use any, all of these either, but I think that they're good to know. Facebook has 3 million users. Um, this, this data is collected between, I had a couple different stores, sources, but it's like 2021 to 2023 data. YouTube is at 2.7. TikTok, I don't know as if any friends group specifically uses TikTok, but I wanted to bring it into the the, the numbers because this is partially the future and just something to keep your eye on. Or if you can uh, uh, usurp a, a young person who knows how to use TikTok and you can pull them into your media group, that would probably be extremely beneficial as well. Um, the growth that they have had is tremendous for the shorter period of time that, that they've existed and that they skyrocketed in numbers past even their past Instagram at this point and Twitter. So um, <clears throat> Twitter uh, was, oh, yes, go ahead, Pam. I just have a question because I'm old and completely ignorant. I, I know the existence of TikTok. Mm -hmm. I think that I understand that it's strictly short little videos. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I am what is classified as an elder millennial. So I even am not as well versed in TikTok. Um, I do have an account. I have a couple of videos and that's about it. But what I gather from TikTok is, yes, it's all videos. And the younger generations and even um, Gen Z and millennials are actually utilizing TikTok as a search engine. So instead of going to like my generation, we're like, oh, I'll just Google it. You know, we'll Google it. And this, the younger generation is, oh, I'll just look it up on TikTok. So I'm also a quilter and a lot of quilting groups will go to TikTok and be like, I need videos on how to miter corners on borders and they'll search TikTok and they'll get videos. So it's kind of like, um, maybe I don't want to say a condensed YouTube, but it's like YouTube in a different format. So I don't Tasha, hi. Yes. Um, I, I've been using it a lot lately and, yeah. um, it's, it's basically like you said, but the way they get around it is, um, like I follow a lot of, um, like do yourself and home remodeling and carpentry sites. And um, they might post a little video, but then they usually tell you um, to go to their um, profile. And okay. then in their profile, they'll put a, a link to either a website or, um, or someplace else. Like say, for example, it's furniture refinishing the products they use and things that they'll say, go to my profile and I have a link there um, to the products I use. Or if, um, if they might even have like a YouTube or their web page uh, link in there. So that's kind of how they get around um, the brevity that, uh, that, you know, front faces you when you first go in there. But All there's, right. um, there's a lot of ways to get a lot of um, more underlying um, 
information as well because I go see a lot of uh, live music and um, you can go in there and they might have like their latest song or their latest release and they'll tell you how to um, find it on Spotify or um, YouTube or someplace else or they might um, reference their uh, their web page so that you can go and, and look at their upcoming uh, tour schedule. Oh, so it's okay. um it's pretty um you know broad in what you can do with it even though again like uh kind of like Instagram as well the front end of it is is pretty much um brief about what you could post and it is mostly videos i mean i guess almost all they're almost all videos and then mm -hmm. they'll refer you to um their profile page where they usually put uh, a link or some way to access uh, other information that they can't really show in that, that initial post. Okay. okay. Right. That's what, yeah, you're talking about it. And I'm like, it, it seems to like, well, I mean, it's an, it's a newer social media platform. So, I mean, it kind of sounds like it's, it's combining aspects of the other ones, you know, like anything becomes new and improved. Maybe it's like a condensed version of all of those. Well, not right. Kind of but I think like, like you said, and, you know, we kind of see that there's been almost a migration, like start out Facebook and now Facebook is kind of like, you know, the elders, um, <laughs> you know, social media site. And then you go from there to Instagram and then from Instagram, uh, TikTok's basically, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of eclipsing uh, the other two. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely growing. That's for sure. I got a, I have a couple of slides that'll follow this to talk about gener the different generations and what they're using as well. So, um, but yeah, and it was actually too, this is a little bit later, but you'll see the stats, but um, Snapchat was actually two years ago projected to be where TikTok is now. So it's interesting. I think probably why TikTok, it, you know, accelerated is because it was big in the news several years ago and it was boost amplified. Um, and probably it's why it grew more than maybe if it would have organically, maybe who knows, you know, it's right. I think that's a good point because, um, you know, it got, you know, a fair amount of uh, bad press because of where it originated at mm -hmm. and stuff. But, you know, any press is, yeah. is good press. Press is press. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, that's that's good info. See, I mean, you're more experienced than me in, on TikTok, so maybe you should take over, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you can see the numbers there for the other one. Um, Twitter actually, um, is it's it's about the same where it was statistically. It is it's still gaining new members, but at the same time, it did lose thirteen percent of its membership when it switched over from Twitter to X. So that is that's actually something that we've um Marcy and I have had conversations on and in, in the the effort to put into it and the, the return on it and um fortunately enough for us we use um a, a software called Hootsuite so we can program across all of them in one location um so it's it's not a lot of effort for us to just continue to feed into that but um if you don't have something like Hootsuite or there's a bunch of the other ones out there you know investing time you know looking into any of these investing time into them you know it's where where is your time best spent um snapchat i've used a couple times but you're if you don't know what snapchat is um you do a short video and it's live for like maybe you send it to different people or groups and it's live for i don't think any more than 24 hours and then it disappears like there's no it's just gone so um it's great for instant messaging here in the moment, but there's no leftover record of what's there. So, um, so yeah. So who is out there? So here are the different generations that are highlighted currently. Um, I know there are people out there that are still older than baby boomers and younger than Gen Z. Um, however, this is the percentages of who's on social media. Um, and you can see, you know, Gen Z, like I have a niece and a nephew, both of them are Gen Z. And one of them actively uses TikTok all the time. She thinks 
Facebook is old school and I have my nephew just doesn't care. He would rather play video games all day. So, but 94% of, you know, I mean, this is the future. P people are going to be on social media platforms well into the future. So um, something to keep in mind, I mean, not to invalidate any particular group, but depending on what you want to do with your group, who you want to attract, who's available out there, these are kind of your stats around who's, what age groups are utilizing the social media. So, you know, and that's something to consider too. Like if you wanted to target somebody in like Gen X, you know, if you're targeting, trying to so send a message out on, on social media, you're only reaching maybe 70% of the, the population if they're part of your group, but you know, maybe something, you know, posters or mailings or other things might be better options depending on what you're doing. So just stats. I like stats. So, um, and this is what they're using. So I found this really interesting. You can see the progression of it. I left YouTube on there. We use YouTube as well. It's a great source um, to house our videos, um, but it is a lot of work. So it's not really something that, you know, I don't know as if any of the friends groups have a YouTube page um, that I know of, but I, I mean, they may exist. But it's interesting to see, you know, here's even, I mean, actually looking at it, every generation still uses YouTube quite heavily. Um, but to see YouTube above, you know, Facebook and whatnot, but it's also a great, you know, educational thing. It's, I know, like I said, like I've used it to look up videos and how to's and stuff like that, but you can see um, for the most part, they kind of stay in the same order and they just kind of naturally migrate to different ones and then boom, enter Gen Z. And they're just like, we're doing our own thing. Here we are. Here's additional stats for where they're headed. Um, there, as you can see, only 34% are using Facebook. So, but Instagram has, is also their top one. And that's the beauty of this. Like Meta owns both Facebook and Instagram. So when we get, we'll see in the next couple of slides, like you can, if you want to have an Instagram account, you don't have to, um, get, you don't have to post on both of them. You can post in one spot and it'll do it for you. It'll, you can cross post it. You could just post on one, you know, sometimes we post, um, like competitions or like call outs and stuff. And we'll give, we'll do giveaways. We'll give, do give a different giveaway for Facebook users than we do Instagram users. You know, you can utilize it, but you don't have to, you can literally do it all in one click. So any questions or comments before I move on? I have one. The other thing is like, I went out and looked at our stats and mm -hmm. it's, um, we, I predominantly get, uh, women uh, viewers on Facebook mm -hmm. at, at my thing. So I guess, um, you know, that might be, you know, is that the best platform to attract uh, younger guys and stuff? Because you would think, um, you know, for hiking and biking and all those, you know, sports like that, that there should be, you know, a fairly um, high interest among, you know, young um or you know middle-aged men and stuff but um i'm not getting that many people um uh, uh, viewing our page that are yeah. guys i actually um that was one one of the stats i did look at as well on our page and i think universally women use social media more than men in general that's um, true yeah so um i know if i remember correctly without digging into it over here um if I remember correctly, I believe our largest group is um, a cross between the baby boomers and Gen X is right now our biggest age group. Um, but they're both women dominate in all the age groups that we have in our stats. Tasha, what what do they consider the Gen X? Um, Gen, so Gen X starts in 1990. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So I'm I'm a guess I'm guessing the next generation is Gen Alpha. Um I'm, I'm assuming we'll circle back around in the alphabet. Um so your Gen Z are starting to turn into teenagers this year or end of this year, beginning of next year. Okay. So, so yeah. So we're at preteens. 
Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so how do I engage everyone? So it's a lot of people, a lot of age groups, um, lots of things to consider. So first and foremost, you don't have to use every program. Um, start somewhere that's better than nowhere. Um, and it sounds like all of you are on, you know, you're using Facebook and or Instagram, which is really the best spot to start in right now. Um, both platforms, like I said, they're combined. They're both owned by Meta. You can control them together at the same time. And even though, you know, Facebook reaches across three of those generations, Instagram will catch your, your newer generation um, and go back and forth. But um, I would say consider what, what are you doing? What are you trying to, to do? Um, do you want, are you trying to help the park get more people into the park? Are you looking to get more people to come to volunteer days? Are you trying to get more people to just attend your events? Or are you trying to find somebody or people to actually join your friends group as well? So I think all of those things are great things to consider when you're making your post. And gee, I mean, not that you want to single out one particular age group, like, oh, I only want, you know, this age group. So I'm only going to target them. You want to be able to inclu be inclusive of everybody. But maybe it's a matter of, okay, I'm going to post this way and maybe I'll repost it again and change the verbiage a little bit. Maybe, um, you know, uh, I don't know what the right term is, but maybe like um, just change out how you're trying to attract different people for different things, um, taking that into consideration. And of course, and again, like not, you do want to keep everything inclusive to everybody, but it doesn't have to appeal to everybody. Um, there's beauty and diversity and, um, you know, it's, we, you know, we, especially, I publish a lot of stuff. We're across the board. We have people, you know, we, we're doing a book club. We're doing volunteer days. We've got, you know, educational things. We've got blogs that are going out, um, talking about press releases and you guys there's there's just so much different so many different things um and i'm sure you guys as well can access all of those types of things or have that variety in your parks or forests as well so um so how do we do it um this is the biggest thing i would say is always carry a camera with you and um, whether it's on your phone or something so in my previous role before I joined PPFF, I was a graphic designer for a printing company and hundreds of nonprofits a year doing their different print, print projects. And I have to tell you, this was the biggest struggle. Every nonprofit, because you are usually small or you're volunteer based, it's not like it's it's not of mindset for a lot of them to be like, oh, I'm doing something. I should take a picture. So this is the biggest battle, I think. If you can remember, no matter what you're doing, if you're just going for a walk, you know, um, if you're just, oh, my park ranger is out planting a tree, snap a photo, you know, like, yes, you want, you might want to be involved. You might want to help plant that tree, but somebody grab a photo, grab a short video, grab, you know, grab it. Like that's make this memorable in today's day and age or have somebody else do it if you don't want to take your phone with you, but um, that is the biggest battle. Just capture the content. And even if you can't use it today, you have no idea when you'll be able to use it in the future. Like you'll be like, oh, this summer I took a, a you know, photo. I'm going to share it now. It's, it's relevant now, you know? And, um, so just keep taking, take the photos, take the videos. So, um, one of the other biggest ways that you can help your own social media platforms is tagging. So, you're tagging, oh, you know, our um, parent organization, Pennsylvania Parks and Forest Foundation is having a photo contest. And if you tag us or whomever, you know, whatever you're tagging another group, maybe you've got a Penn State group in your area or the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts came and you wanted to tag their troop, they have a page. What that's doing is it is building algorithms on your social media platform. So the more people you make that algorithm tag with, the more those algorithms are going to be like, oh, here's, you know, oh, the library, this, this, this 
group of nature lovers is tagging the library and oh they keep collecting people so well here's a library person maybe I'll I'll show this group to them maybe they're they're interested and so the algorithms will start to expose you to more people and places the more people that over time that you tag and involve in your page and a oh, lot so of yeah excuse me do you know um I get a lot of um posts that says suggested for you is that mm -hmm. like where that's coming from yep that's where it's coming from it's your algorithms it's you are anytime you use the the platforms it's learning your behaviors that's why a lot of times um not to necessarily open a can of worms but like let's say politically so politically you might be this way and the more you in the more you interact with those posts of that type the more it's going to feed those to you because it's like, oh, you like this. So we're going to we're going to keep you sucked in. We're going to keep you involved by continuing to show you this data versus something that maybe is something you oppose. And you're like, I don't want to see that. And you close your app and you're done for the day. So that's what it's doing. It's learning who you are. And it's just like the whole cookies thing. Like you're like you Google Amazon and you're like, I need a banana cookie. Cut. So you go back to Facebook and you're being advertised a banana cutter. It's it's like part of the same thing. You're, right. you're like, you know, like it's just it's crazy. It's crazy. But that's what it's doing. So by doing that tagging, you're introducing your group into someone else's algorithm and vice versa. OK, when when you say tagging, what's um, what's the physical process of doing that? Is that when you you put their thing in the text or is that when you highlight them in the picture like so that's that's great let me open my our facebook page here and um i'm gonna slide it over here all right can you did it come over can you guys see our facebook page no um, no all right so let me see if i can change the screen here hmm. see, i don't think what I what I do the most of is um, I'll get a post that um, people, I guess, sent to the friends or or to the park itself. And okay. I, I, do, I do predominantly a lot of sharing, like sharing a post to me, to the friends group. And that's kind of how I, um, you know, promulgate a lot of a lot of stuff and then get a lot of interaction from um the other sites. Okay. Did it come up? I changed the view. Yes. But sometimes. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. So if I'm going to go in here and tag somebody, so you open a new, if you do it this way, you can do it otherwise, but a lot of times, so um, you're friends of King's Gap, right? So okay. we had a great training with, okay. So I want to tag you, you type in the at symbol. And okay. So you'll see here, this is probably my biggest tags. Like this is usually, well, I don't tag usually friends groups, but maybe that's who I've um, interacted with the most or whatever. That's how it just populates. Okay. So I will start typing in friends. Uh, you'll have to friends of Kings. And so as you're typing, a box will pop up and it'll make a suggestion. So then from there, I can just click on it. It'll finish okay. it out. Right. You'll see, okay, great. Yeah. So you'll see it'll highlight it. That indicates right. that it is indeed it's tagged once you hit post. Okay, great. So sometimes I know sometimes like we use, um, you know, a different program and some of them will work. Some of them don't. It's just it's because it's in a secondary program, not necessarily on here. The other thing to keep in mind when you're trying to tag people, if you know, like they sometimes you, as a page, you cannot tag individual people's profiles unless their settings allow you to do that. And, right. by, and, and that can also go for groups and it can also go for other pages. It's all in their personal settings. So um, like, like no one but my, on my personal page, no one but my friends are allowed to tag me in posts and a lot of times, like I have somebody who tags me in a lot of stuff that I just don't want to be tagged in. I have actually changed my settings that I have to approve what I'm tagged in before it goes out on my profile. So um, 
as a page though, I, that is set as public. I don't think we have that option to untag. Well, you can untag, but you can't approve posts or approve tags. Tag tags. You can't approve tags, but you can untag um, yourself from groups as well. Okay. Okay. And I know you're going to cover this later, I think, but what's the difference between use the ad sign to find things that you could um, insert that would become tags, but the what's a hashtag and how does the hashtag compare to this and when do you use that? So um, hashtags are on the next slide, but that's okay. We'll absolutely talk about them, right? So hashtags are great because, um, so let me cancel this out. So let's say... I'm new to hiking and I just want to, you know, and I just want to search PA hiking, right? So if you just go in PA hiking, what it'll do, yeah, um, it'll throw out some groups, some pages, um, it'll pull some old posts, maybe from different places. But um, if you go in and say, okay, maybe I want to do the hashtag PA hiking, okay, it'll pull posts public posts from all over facebook that okay. have this hashtag somewhere like i have no idea where the I, I i've never heard of this group before but here's that pa hiking tag okay here's another one like so any tag that you throw in as long as you have a public post anybody can search for that um so if i did pa uh parks forest capitalization doesn't matter but i have an ocd habit of doing it so <laughs> pa parks and so a lot of this you'll see is our stuff but i've also shared to other pages so like this exploring pa parks that's our we we own this page so we mandate it we manage it so we share a lot of stuff there as well but um kim kim hikes she's one of our influencers she's great she promotes um being outdoors in state parks right. a lot so she's used this hashtag. If I click see, you know, see more, it's going to be somewhere as well. So that's where hashtags come in great. And, and hashtags are, they can be as specific as you want or as general as you want. So if you just want, you know, um, hashtag state parks, you're going to get all 50 states of state parks, whoever. And this will be fed to you by algorithm as well. So maybe you've been to this place or this is travel Nevada. So maybe, or maybe this is just a really super popular post and that's where they're feeding it to you. But um, so they can be great for you to use as in a general sense. So if you're posting something about hiking, throw in a hashtag hiking. So if somebody's searching, if you want something more specific, hashtag friends of Kings, Kings Gap, you know, you can, you and it's great too because I use it. So I had um I have a personal hashtag that I use. I used to have my own graphic design business. So when I post in a quilting group that I belong to, like if I ask questions, so I don't have to search again to find my own posts. I actually throw my own personal hashtag in and mm. then I just search my own hashtag and all of my posts come up. Or if somebody else posts something and I'm like, I want to reference this information later, I go in the comments and I'm just like, I want to reference this later and I throw my hashtag in. So I can then go back into the group anytime and find my own hashtag. So um, it's it's a way to search. It's like a, it's like its own little search engine. Okay, so. I, got, I got two related questions then. The sure. first one is um, when to um, have the, the hashtag initially exist i on my page or on my friends group is if mm -hmm. i put a hashtag on it there and define it or give it a name then facebook creates that as a a, a universal hashtag and then anybody yep. that goes in and tries to do that exact one will get whatever has been related to it yep yep okay. and, and then works. for other things like I can just um, like a guess, like if I want to do, you know, is there a, a hashtag for kayaking in PA? Mm -hmm. So I would just type it in, either gets a match and doesn't get a match. Right. And then I could try something else. 
And it's also great to see what's out there because like when we were doing our planning for this year, we wanted to go with the theme leap in. And so okay. we were searching on both platforms, hashtag leap in to see what came up. And surprisingly, it's not a very highly used hashtag because um, it just looks like leaping without the G. And I think that's where, so that's where I come in with my capitalization and capitalize the L and the I. So it defines it, but that's just me. Uh, so it's, it's, it's great again, because the, then, you have to, um, because you said capitalization, then you have to, you have to get a case match for it to match or no? Nope. No, it doesn't matter. It's, it's by letters. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm actually, I'm not sure you can use numbers and hashtags. I think you can't, you can I've used yours before on different things. So it's just letters and numbers. You can't use symbols. You can't use, I think you can use emojis on Instagram in your hashtag, but Remember, if you use hashtags, you can really limit who's like if I go out and sure. search PA kayaking versus PA kayaking with a kayak with a well, there's not a kayak emoji, there's a canoe emoji, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to get less results than if you sure. leave it off. But it's a great way to start too, because if you're like, oh, I want to start one for, you know, um, King's Gap go out, research what exists and see what's out there first, because maybe you might be com com competing against somebody. You know, we, I know, I know I've talked about this a lot, but I belong to this quilting group and um, part of a quilt is called, or a bundle of fabric is called a jelly roll. And in the last few years, <laughs> it's just a two and a half inch bundle, round bundle. And in the last two and a half years, there's actually like a rap metal artist that's come out and his name is Jelly Roll. So it's really funny when you're searching hashtag Jelly Roll to look for Jelly Roll quilts. And it's a mix of fabric bundles and this rapper with heavy facial tattoos and stuff. It's really kind of comical. So yeah, he was um, on the Grammys. Oh, was he? Yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not much of a pop culture person, but um, <laughs> it's 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 funny. So but it is it's, it's a, a point to make, you know, do a little digging make sure that before you throw something out there it's not going to lead you to something that already exists that you might have to compete with so okay any other questions on hashtags and tagging and i'll if not i'll switch back to my other screen figure out how to do it i figured it out once we're gonna figure it out again. there it is all right. Are we back to the, can we all see the, my, the presentations? Okay. Great. Yes. Okay. So the other thing that is big, as we can tell, we've talked about TikTok. The other big thing on Instagram is videos and reels. And part of this is not only, there's a couple of things, a couple stats to make. I don't know about you guys and how your lives are, but every once in a while I get into what I refer to as the doom scroll. I end up on Facebook before bed and I click on that one really adorable cat video. And before I know it, I've spent an hour swiping through videos and you're like, how did I get here? Right. So with videos and reels on both meta platforms, they automate, as long as it's a public post, they will use your algorithms to feed those videos and reels to people in your network and out of your network. So it's one way to help spread the, your name around. You know, when we were in Georgia in September, we I have a video of Pam trying out a tra track chair to date. Um, I'll double check this on our Instagram page, but to date it is the most popular video and it exceeds well beyond um, our own, you know, well, I mean, there's tags in it too for like track chair, and inclusive um outdoor inclusivity it's got just shy of 3000 views and they're not all, all people who follow our page so it is that's where like those videos and reels you know a post will go out and yeah you might see it fed to different people through the algorithms for a couple of days maybe a week or two but those videos get pushed out a lot farther and a lot deeper than just a sh a straight post will so not that all of your posts have to be videos, but consider it. Consider just, I'm going for a walk today or, you know, like for example, Andre likes to walk walk trails and help clear them when he can. You know, maybe it's, he takes a quick video of, oh, there's a tree down. We're going to take a quick 
video, talk about what what's going to happen, what's going to he's going to do about it, and you know, post it and throw on a couple of hashtags, and you know, it's it's out there. It's being pushed into that what I refer to as doom scrolling. So if somebody could, I mean, I've learned a lot of things in that doom scrolling. You watch a video, it's not just all cute cat videos. It's sure. You watch how, to, you know, cooking videos or, or how to's, or like you said, you watch, you know, DIYs on TikTok. So um, you get sucked in on one of them and you just keep going and Facebook and Instagram will throw your reels and videos in with everybody else. So a higher reach. So can I ask a question, comment and a quick question from Andre? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, people seem to love videos of water flowing. Mm -hmm. And it's just mesmerizing. And I guess it's soothing for the people who are uh, watching an hour's worth of insomniac uh, Facebook content. <laughs> question for you, Reels. Could you please help us understand that? I know Facebook always asks me, do you want this to become a reel? And I always say no, because I'm afraid of what that is. Could you tell us what a reel is? Sure. So um, a reel is clipped at 60 seconds, 60 or 90. I'm not sure the exact number, but it can only be so long. But a video, I think if I remember correctly, an Instagram video can't be any longer than 10 minutes. Versus okay. a real, a real might it, actually, it might be capped at three minutes. It's only a couple minutes long. Like you've got a very specific, you've got to say what you got to say in, in a short video. And then, but the nice thing too is with a real, um, when you try to, if it's too long, you can actually, the editors will let, like, if you go to post it to Instagram, you can edit it. So you can shorten it. So you're not like taking it back to your computer, editing the video. You can do it right inside the app's editor to post it out as a reel. So essentially it is, it's kind of just like a video. It's just capped at a certain time. Okay. Tasha, are they, are reels only um, present within Instagram? Cause I don't know nope. if I've seen reels in Facebook. They are. They are in Facebook. Um, Again, it has to do with the, the algorithms. Uh, okay. The more you click on them, the more they're going to feed them to you. So okay. um, I used to be somebody that only watched reels on Instagram. And then I started watching a couple here and there on Facebook. And before you know it, it's post, post, post. Here's a selection of reels. Post, 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 post. Here's a selection of reels. And okay. they, they can um, cross. Like some of, even though they might be housed in one platform or the other, if you set your settings, they can be cross posted in both. So, um, and I'll, I'll have like the scheduling stuff a little bit later. You can like schedule it so that they're in both platforms with just a couple clicks of a button. Okay. I didn't know that. That's mm -hmm. good. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, content, <laughs> we're all about stories. Like it's so, um, amazing sometimes how we're creatures of habit and, you know, I go to the park and I'll give you an example. So I go to a park and, you know, you might see or hear something and to the people that live it and breathe it every day, it's just something common. It's not a big deal. But for example, I've um, had the pleasure of visiting Pine Grove twice this summer. And one of them was a legislative tour. And we heard the park manager talk about the, um, uh, infrastructure of like the sewer systems. And I mean, it's a sewer system. Like, it doesn't sound like it's that exciting, but they have, um, the, I don't know what you, I mean, I, you guys might, Andre, you might know what it's specifically called with the cattails over the leech bed and, you know, like I find it cool. And is it exciting to everybody? No, but if there's good public information, like if you're, you're allowed to share, that's the other thing. I mean, yes, make sure you're allowed to share the information, but it seems like pretty maybe boring to some people, but some other people, it might be exciting. It might be a low post count, but if it's out there, you don't know who will like it. I have a nephew who is on the spectrum. And when I walk in and he's watching YouTube videos, he's watching on how NASA calculates launches of rocket ships. And I'm like, my eyes cross. I'm like, well, how can anybody watch this? But here he is. He'll just watch one video after another after video. So you have no idea what in your park 
you can tell the story of. And it might just be mundane to you. It might be a story that you know a million and one times you've told, you've heard, but the world may not know it. Share it. If you can share it, share it. And tell the story of your park tell the story of forest or the trail or your volunteers or your the park staff you know get those stories and tell them they make great content um okay any other questions comments suggestions on any of this so far okay i have one more um sure. about um you know with the way things are now um we have, um, I guess, specific guidance about um, taking pictures of children. Okay. You know, for a lot of times, um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess it's the basically, you know, they ask you to take them uh, from a perspective where they aren't really identifiable. Mm -hmm. And that'd be, that'd be the only thing, you know, maybe bring up to people that, you know, would consider um, taking a lot of pictures of things because, uh, you know, I know it happened for there, and I used to be um, uh, a master gardener, and we mm -hmm. had summer camps and stuff, and that was a that was you know a really big thing now. And just uh, to mention that, no, that's and that's a tremendously fantastic point because it is like if you can get in there and get photos from a great angle where you're not capturing faces, that's perfect. Um, if you have to, you know, like nowadays too, you'll, I, like, I have a friend that's, she's a preschool teacher. And when she posts photos that her kids are in, she puts little smiley face emojis over the kids' faces that she's not allowed to share. So that's something right. too that you could do. Um, or like, I know it is something too, because I know like, um, in like foster care kids, even even if their parents are okay with it, you're still in a lot of situations, you're not allowed to legal, like share their photos if if a student is in foster care. And sometimes you don't know, you don't know who, who what kids are in foster care and what, what aren't. So, but if you have the ability, go ahead and ask the parents. Go ahead, Andre. So a couple things about this that I've learned just over the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, I try really hard. I do a lot of public programs where I'm the leader and mm -hmm. I try to always bring up exactly this point not just for kids, but for adults. Not everybody wants their privacy invaded. And so I often say, um, you know, I like to get pictures of these tours. Uh, does anyone not want to be on Facebook? I understand if anyone's in the witness protection program, uh, you know, I'll try to respect that. And that always gets a giggle, but brings the point across. With children, sure. um, yeah, I try really hard only to get kids from the back you know, if it's a group photo or something, but I've had parents send me photographs or put them on their own Facebook page, at which point I think it's fair to say if it's a public page, they've waived their interest. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this wonderful picture that I use occasionally from, I don't know, eight years ago, where this little girl and there's a skink, you know, a little lizard crawling on her and me. And the mother took the picture and was like, yeah, use it. And, you know, yeah. at this point, the kid is probably a teenager and would be mortified to see that. Um, but it's a great <laughs> photo. But the flip side of it is a year or two ago, we had a visiting history group, a CCC group, and they had an old typewriter. And this little boy was typing and by encourage, they said, you know, type on it. And I, I took a picture and immediately the mother was there and I said, this would be such a great picture. It was it was a fantastic photo. May I use this? I, I immediately asked the question just because. Mm -hmm. And I was a little surprised. Her body language was a little hesitant. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I asked, I always ask. I, the way I present this is, you know, may I use this photo? I always ask. I know some parents don't want that. And she hemmed and hawed and we were there for several minutes and then she said to me, I'd prefer not. And I said, of course. And I turned around and deleted it. It broke mm -hmm. my heart because it was a fantastic photograph. Right. Snapshot, so cute. And for whatever her reason was, I certainly didn't probe. And I just want to say, right. don't probe if someone says no, just say, that's I understand point. and immediately back off is my suggestion. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's a fantastic point. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. So... One of the other things that we see a lot of results out of is engagement. This is asking open, like have your audience interact with you, find ways for them to interact with you. So this might be like, you know, a couple of days ago we had planned for vacation day and we posted uh, actually two of these on one go 
Um, what state parks or forests are you planning to, you know, visit this summer? Let us know in the comments. So your call to action is come, come tell us. And then uh, we offered a giveaway. We had a map of Michaud, purple lizard map of Michaud that we ended up pulling from the pool. A ran we had a random selection and send it out. So um, for us, the, that particular map was an older edition. It came from someone's personal collection that hadn't been used. So it cost us nothing. And um, it offered a great giveaway. And actually the woman that we random randomly pulled was so excited. She's like, I have so many purple lizard maps and I don't have this, you know, so it's great. It's great to build. So, and it doesn't have to be a lot. Like right now, stickers are huge. Um, you know, it could be a sticker. It doesn't have to be even your brand of sticker. You know, we have leave no trace stickers. Somebody donated a coloring book in March. There's a coloring day coming. So I'll use that for a give giveaway. Um, it's nature themed, you know, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, as long as it's appropriate, not branded, but you know, with something you don't want to promote, obviously, but, um, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just throw it out there. See, see what your interaction is. So find ways to engage with them. Um, projects. That's another one that part of that, tell your story, talk about your projects, you know, Hey, we're excited. We're starting to work on this this summer. Um, or, Hey, you might be new to our page. Have you seen the story about us building two bridges in our state park and the, 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 the fun that went into that and, um, share those tidbits out, you know, people, people like to know, um, and share your critters. Everybody loves critters. Um, and, uh, like Tina was saying, you know, she does that every week and it seems so small, but look at the interaction that she's getting, you know, you have kids who like bugs, you have kids who like bears or adults, grown, grown children who like bugs and bears and just share it. Any critter, any, just share it out there. People love it. So, um, humor, clean humor, family appropriate humor is great. Um, it shows that you're relatable and approachable. Um, creating an event I find helps me. Like, I'm like, oh, here's an event. I will say that I'm interested in an event. And then Facebook sends reminders for you. Um, I do know later we'll get it. We'll touch base a little bit on scams. Um, there was some incidents over the summer, but we'll touch on that. So keep an eye on, on events, but um, events are great. They're great ways to help get information out there. Um, those are also something that your algorithms will push out to people. Hey, we see you just liked this event. Have you considered this other one? So, um, that's great as well. And then, um, just remember your posts don't have to be in season. You know, we're about to approach the tail end of winter and a lot of people don't like winter. And so you can start teasing them with summer or spring photos. So, any questions or comments on that? No? Okay. So I'm going to run through this. Um, this is scheduling a post. I did not throw in. So th there's a great thing about this. So this is how to get to your planner on your page from Facebook, these steps here. Um, I did not throw that in how to do it from Instagram, but the, I did check. No matter which way you come in through Instagram or Facebook, it will pull you to the same exact meta business suite. So from aside from the side, the rest are for both platforms. Okay. So inside Facebook, um, from your homepage, your, your, that you manage, you're going to go to professional dashboard. It'll take you to new list. I had to scroll down and I actually had to click see more for this planner option to come up. It's the very first time I clicked it, I was hit with this pop-up to st uh, start that initial scheduling post. If you just wanna look around, just go ahead and click the X or the cancel and not deal with it. It's not a big deal. You can always change da data later. If not, you can throw in something and hit save and it will drop you into the planning session, okay? So this is no matter, so up here I changed it to meta so you know that it's both platforms. Um, when you come in, this is what your view will be. Um, you can create a new, you can create a new post immediately or schedule it out by either clicking on the date you want and it'll open a new box dialog box, or you can go up here and hit create as well. And then from there, 
this will show up and this is kind of like your blank canvas. And there's all these different options that you just, you can fill out. As you fill this out, there's a few more, but it's in a, you know, scrolling. So as you fill this out, this is your view, right? So we have Instagram. I don't know if you can see this teeny tiny Instagram logo right there. So this um, all is the next screen, but depending on how you wanna see this view, you can click on this. This is my Facebook feed view. You can click on this and click on Instagram feed view. As long as your Instagram and your Facebook are connected and you have, I mean, you have to have Instagram as well to do it. So this first box here, if you click on it, this is something I actually learned while I was building this presentation. So up here, when you click on this, this is what it says, where do you want to post this, right? So we're posting to Facebook and Instagram. If you don't, just unclick it. It also offers you the option to do publish to Facebook groups. So this just happens to be the last group our page joined. And this page allows posting. As a page, an organization page, I am not always allowed to post in other groups. Sometimes I have to switch to my personal account to be able to make posts. So if this isn't the group I wanna post into, you can just click on this, see more groups. And these are all the options that you're allowed to post in. So at any point you can just click those boxes and say save, and it will have them checked in this list. So when that post goes out, it will post to Facebook, Instagram, and any of the groups that you have selected to post into as well. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. So this is just kind of a quick view. I threw in some data. This is what you'll see as you're building it. It'll change, which is fine. Um, it just constantly updates. There's two toggles up here, what it'll look like on a desktop and what it'll look on mobile. You can go back and forth. Sometimes it matters. Sometimes, most of the time it doesn't. It is going to do what it wants to do. Sometimes you can force it into what you want it to be. So if you want, feel free to look at it, but it's not necessarily the program for either. And then this is the bottom half of that. Um, it's just looking, or I apologize. No, it's not. This one is. Um, your scheduling options. So this is everything I had selected. I had Facebook and Instagram. I have, you can schedule them for the same day. You can schedule them for different days in this case or different times. So I have them scheduled for different times. And then privacy settings, 99% of the time, I, I mean, actually 100% time, it's probably just going to be public. If you had a personal page, yeah, maybe, but I think for what we're doing here, you if you can't pub if you can't publish it publicly, you shouldn't be publishing it. So and then go ahead and click click schedule. And then it'll bring you back to your planner and you can see both of your events are scheduled for their times. I'll go over how to like edit and delete them as well, but up until this point, does anybody have questions? Nope, okay. So from here, say I'm like, oh, I really, you know what? I can't publish to Instagram at eight o'clock. Um, and you know what? We're not doing this event anymore, so I need to delete both of them. So you can just click on the post. And when you do that, it'll open up a new dialog box. And this is what you'll see. It'll show your initial details. Um, if you were to scroll down, it would show the full post. But um, you can be like, oh, I need to delete this. So there's three dots up here. From here, you can edit the post, duplicate it, which I'll, I'll come back to. You can reschedule it for a different time or a different date. You can just move it to drafts, be like, I'm not ready to delete it, but I don't know when I need to schedule it, or I can just delete it. Duplicating, if you don't know what that is as far as pub like publishing, is what it will do is it'll be like, okay, here's the post for today. We're going to duplicate it for exactly another day. And then you can re, so it's a whole different event, but it's the same date and you can put it in again. So sometimes when we have campaigns, when I schedule it once, I'm scheduling it three different days across the month because it's I'm there, I need to use the same post. Maybe I'm tweaking a word or two here or there, but for the most part, duplicating it will get you across all of that. Or say, you know what? I scheduled this for a different day at a different time. And honestly, it could just go out now. So you could just hit publish now and then it would um, publish it in that moment. In this particular example, let's say I deleted it. 
and it'll only delete the one event you click it. So in this particular, I was clicked on the Facebook one, I believe. And then I went in, I did the same thing and I deleted Instagram as well. So then when you go back, it's not there anymore. Now you may have to hit refresh on your page because you're like, oh, it's still there. Hit refresh. It'll update your screen and it'll repopulate. Okay. Any questions on scheduling? Yeah, I have a question, Tasha. Sure. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that Facebook handles posts and events differently because events almost has a, a standard page format or at least mm -hmm. fields that you have to fill in and yeah. posts are pretty much uh, free form. Now this scheduling, it says scheduling post on top, but is this scheduling events or both or, or what? Because what you just said, it's something that I wanted to do and and um, had trouble figuring out how to do it before. Because we have a lot of, um, like, say, um, King's Gap has something called Music Music on the Mountain, which yep. is a summer yep. uh, music series, which occurs the first Sunday of every month in the okay. summer. Now, um, I like to have that a post for or an event for every month. But okay. then I would change um, who the um, who the music uh, groups are, bands, right. and then also change the date and stuff. So is this in, in scheduling where I would do that or do you know? That's a great question. Um, I'm taking a quick look here. Um, I have a second screen that I'm looking at. Sure. Um, it's been a while since I've created an event, um, but I am wondering if maybe, I'm not sure you can duplicate it as far as using it as a template okay, um, or scheduling it out. I'm not saying that it doesn't. I just, right. I, I haven't, I haven't, um, you know, promoted it in that I haven't worked with it in that capacity uh -huh. certainly something um I could take a look into yeah in, See, because we have that another thing we do is we do um uh yoga at the mansion mm -hmm. which occurs like almost every Sunday at the mansion we have a lot of um recurring uh events that that happen um either monthly or weekly or even yearly that um that having a way to do that and schedule them and have them post it you know near to the time that they're going to be would right. really make um you know would be a really good way to set up it but again I, i'm not really right. sure how to do it there's also two and I, I again i don't know how to do it but i know sometimes um people do that and it's like a series so I'm almost wondering if you can and do it as a series and then you drop in the different artists. But again, that's okay. something I'll, um, you know, because I know you can do something for multiple dates. Um, okay. It's definitely something I'll take a look into it and see if I can find an easier way to to manage stuff like that. Yeah, I'd uh, really appreciate it because. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Help. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. All right. So um, I want to talk a little bit about post appropriateness. We've had um, a couple of um, friends groups that have had posts go out that they're not necessarily bad, but they're not really in line with the mission of what we're doing. They're a little bit tongue in cheek insulting. So to different groups of people. So this is just one thing. I just want you to kind of keep it in mind when you're resharing and posting things. So primarily remember the mission and what you're trying to do. Does this help or hurt what you're trying to do? Um, you know, I know in different areas, like there's different cultural things that are okay and acceptable, but maybe they're not on a, on a larger scale. So let's just keep inclusivity of everyone in mind. Um, and also like when you're sharing, is this a reflection of the friends group as a whole or is this my personal opinion? And that's one of the big things too. And is it a conflict of interest? So thinking, you know, this is a big election year, instead of saying, 
don't forget to go out and vote for baby Yoda today. Maybe you just keep it neutral and be like, don't forget to go out and vote today. So keep things neutral, keep things inclusive. Um, and just think of things from a different perspective. You know, okay, this is okay to me, but is this going to shun somebody from wanting to be part of our community? So just keeping some of that stuff in mind. Um, post, some things like we talked about algorithms too. So um, absolutely post about what you're doing. Talk about what's going on in the park. Share your stories. When it, it doesn't have to be all about your park though or forest. You can certainly reshare other things. So, but keep it in line with what you're doing. Is it about nature, conservation, excuse me, animal photos or quotes or your partner organizations, volunteerism, that kind of thing. Um, you know, just before you reshare, is this just kind of run it through filters? Is this okay? Is this gonna insult anybody? You know, keep it, keep it inclusive for everyone. And certainly this is one thing that might be a little overlooked, um, supporting your local community. You know, it doesn't have to be just all nature and conservation for it focused. You know, if you, your local library is having um, a bake sale, go ahead, share it, you know, show your support. Because again, as we talked about um, algorithms, it's, hey, here's a nature lover, Here's a library lover. Oh, here's two people that like both pages. Here's three people. And Facebook will be like, oh, wait, there's a pattern here. Let me throw this out to some more people. And not that that's the whole goal, but it sometimes turns into, if I scratch your back, you'll scratch mine. And you'll see that when you start supporting your other local community organizations and events and whatnot, they then in turn will create kind of like a partnership with you and I was in in a previous role that I volunteered in. It was, I know you're not part of the this particular hobby community, but would you mind sharing that we have a, a, an art show coming up? And a lot of times they're like, yeah, no problem. We're part of the community. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so any question, if you ever have like questions on it, don't hesitate to ask either. So um, any questions now though on, go ahead, Andre. No, it's not so much a question, but just an observation. I have learned uh, to check with my park manager or the educator if uh, the educator's in season and managing things uh, on their Facebook to not trip over something that the park itself might take the lead on on social media or conversely things that the park maybe doesn't want to promote. And I, because I have a really close, almost daily relationship with park staff. Um, I, I guess over the last couple of years, I feel as though I've gotten a lot better about recognizing when there might be a tripwire and saying, mm -hmm. hey, I was thinking to put this on Facebook. Is that appropriate? Uh, and usually the answer is, oh, of course. But once in a while, and sometimes I'm not sort of just asking pro forma and I'll get an answer back. Oh, don't, don't put that on Facebook. Like, oh, so I'm glad I asked. Yeah. And conversely, um, there are times when it was an interactive thing between the park and our friends group and maybe some outside entity. And I just want to see if the park would like to take the lead. And then it's a really cheap post for my friend's page to simply share anything the park itself posts, which by the yeah. way, I recommend that's an easy way to get a daily post or whatever. If your park posts something immediately reshare it and you've just done a post for the day, yeah. but I've been um, able to foster a relationship with the park uh, by keeping their social media needs in mind as well as the friends group directly. Yeah, that's a good that's point, Andre. I do I do that all the time, and it's worked really well. That's good. That is good. Okay, we're oh a couple more slides. I swear we're almost we're almost there. So, <laughs> um, one of the things I want to address is bullies. Um, they exist in more abundance than they should, but they do. I wanted to share this in this instance. This actually, um, for some reason, the start of the year, bullies kind of activated and I have hidden more posts in the last six weeks than I think I did um, the whole time I was here last year. So um, this happened to be a post from a week ago. I reshared about spotted lanternflies. Um, DCNR made the post, I reshared I re it. And this was a comment we got. I woke up to this one morning 
And it's just kind of like, why? Like what of all the things out there in this world, why, right? So I immediately just click the hide button. Okay, so there's conversation behind why, why wouldn't I just delete it, right? Um, so what you may not know, when you hide the post, the person who made the post still sees it as an active post. And what this does is if you were to have deleted it, they could go back and go, oh, well, now I'm mad they deleted my post. It's an infringement on speech. So now they've become passionate about being angry with you and they might make more posts and it could just escalate into something else. Um, some other points to that is it preserves the engagement. So say you have somebody who turns into a heckler, you now, and once you delete a post, it's gone. But now you have this running history of posts you've hidden and you can always go back and unhide them. If you're like, okay, you know what? Maybe this is okay to leave out there. You can go back and unhide it. Okay. And then just to kind of show you, this was from, I switched over after I took the screenshots, I switched over into my personal account, went to the same post. And this is what you'll see. You'll still see like the number of likes. You'll see that there's a comment, but you'll see there's no comment. And a lot of times if you see this okay. in other things, this is why people have hidden comments, but, and even you, like, you don't know, you know, if your posts get hidden or not, because you go to visit them and they're there. So you think they're there and they are, but just something to keep in mind, try to, you know, leave them as hidden instead of deleted. That's um, pretty interesting because I've seen a lot of that when, um, especially like when people make comments about um, new, um, Real, uh, real estate or new housing developments. Mm -hmm. It says like there's 65 posts and you go on there and there's only one and it's positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I know what's going on. Okay. Part of that could also be somebody's privacy settings. So you, if you, if somebody has their account really hyper locked down, Right. Where only maybe their friends can see their comments. So that could be part. I'm not saying it is all that, but it could be a mix of the two. So, right. yeah, but no, it could be that the po original post has hidden things. Too. So, okay. So the other thing I just wanted to touch on is scams. Um, this is recent. This was um, a couple days ago over the weekend. Um, this came into me as a notification and it said, um, hello, 24 hour to appeal your or disable your account um, has shared your photo. And that's kind of where it kind of got weird. So what they did is they shared a profile picture. They put all of this stuff that if you were to actually spend the time to read it, it's mostly on point. It's grammatically mostly correct. So it looks legit. It's got a copyright security 2024. It can be very deceptive. Um, I think it's just a matter of remembering before you react to this stuff, before you click on things, just take a moment. Is this how Facebook normally contacts me? No. Facebook doesn't exist as a group. Why would they share this? And if you go to this page and scroll, that's all they did. They just constantly tip, share people's profile pictures with this verbiage, and that's what they did. Within the same week, this was sent to our business um, messenger. And at first I thought it was legit we had just run an advertisement. So I was like, I was thinking, I'm like, how is our advertise? Uh, it was early and it was, um, I didn't get it until the next day. I didn't see it until the next day. So it was in the morning. I'm not the most functional adult in the morning. So I'm like, why, why is Facebook con like, why are, why, why? Right. So when I started looking at it and I'm like, okay, well it says Facebook here, right? Like it's a facebook.com. But if you notice it is directing you to a contact. So I don't know if I were to click on this, if it opens like an email, if it opens a link, I'm not really sure. So I was kind of like, if I had an issue with an advertisement, Facebook would have emailed or left a notification. They wouldn't have sent me a message in Messenger. Also, some of the images were pixelated. So... And then this little weird apostrophe. So the more you look at it, the more you're like, oh yeah, it is. So just keep in mind, don't click on links until you're certain who they're from. Is it a group you normally communicate with? 
Um, are you monitoring your interact? You know, like, are you going to make a post? Think about that too. Like if you're going to make a post and then are you going away on vacation and nobody's monitoring your account, you might want to keep that in mind as well. Um, just in case, you know, something does happen, you, you don't have access to it. And I threw on here, should I turn commenting off? I know some of you know, um, over the summer, there were some scammers that were specifically targeting um, nonprofit events. And they were throwing out a, hey, we're, if you still want to register as a vendor, click this link. And mm -hmm. a few people. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Events are great. Like they're great as reminders. We've already talked about it. It's great. You build that algorithm. They can be shared out. But you could also deal with scammers coming in. So that's one thing that you've got to weigh the risk. Is it worth it? Is it something that I can stay on top of and monitor the interactions on a regular daily basis and what's coming in? So maybe it is like, yes, I want to leave it out there, but maybe it's turning the commenting off. Like that's a possibility on your posts as well. So, um, so that's it. Are there any questions or comments or anything anybody wants to add? That was great, Tasha. I, I learned things. <laughs> but that yeah, doesn't that mean I want your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really well for not, um, not having done this before. That was a great slide um, you put together. Thank you. Good. Sure. Yeah, I, I was wondering, Tasha, if this deck will be out on the um, resources page that we could maybe print it off and have a hard copy in front of us so that we could reference it if we wanted to? Yeah, we can certainly share it. I don't know the normal protocol. I know we'll have the video loaded to YouTube as well, but I have no problem emailing this out. Or, I don't know, Pam, are you... Yeah, why don't you uh, email it to me and I'll, and I'll just turn it into a PDF and link it there with the uh, with the video. When I put the video up tomorrow, the the slides will be there too as a separate thing, so you don't have to go through the whole the whole video to get to them. Easy well, that's peasy. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Tasha, you talked you talked about connecting Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can show us? How was that? Um, I mm, so. I do when it's in front of me. <laughs> so it's a matter of, um, that's great. I wasn't, I honestly wasn't expecting a lot. We don't see a lot of Instagram users. So um, I wasn't expecting it. So I imagine, um, all right. So I did just click on this. So let me move this over here and go back one. See if I can replicate this really quick for you. All right, let me. Sh if you want to do a couple screenshots and uh, turn that into a slide also, we can. That, that wouldn't be a bad thing to have archived as well, you know? Yeah, how to link. Let me write this yeah. down. Link. It's really, this camera of mine, it just keeps clicking on and off, and I don't understand why. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's. I find that the, the view on Facebook is not always tracking with what their help screens tell me I'm going to see. Okay. So it it's it's kind of frustrating, so... If you can capture the images and share them, that's, that's a wonderful thing. thing. Yeah, so um, I did pull it up here quickly on Facebook. Um, I won't go through it fully, but if you go into settings and then linked accounts and you'll see our Instagram is connected here. Um, I'm assuming somewhere, so they have WhatsApp. Is, uh, you can't connect them all, but I'm assuming if you didn't have an account connected already, you would come in here and click on, you know, there would be something to say new account or connect a new account on the Instagram end. Um, I've never done it from an Instagram end, but I can certainly look in and see how that's done as well. But usually, usually it's pretty like they prompt and they're pretty yeah. simple. You'll have to put in, you know, your password and stuff. You'll have to start with the other thing too. Um, I don't know if people know this or not. You'll have to start the Instagram page. Right. Start that, generate it. And even as part of that process nowadays, when you do that, it'll be like, do you have a Facebook account? Would you oh like God. to leave a Facebook account? So it might even prompt you to do it out of Instagram as well. So, okay. but um, certainly, and they are like, it's, um, if I go over here to, I don't know if I can show this really quick, um, making a post. Um, 
I can't, I have to drag in a photo, but when you get into this process, um, there's a, like, after you get done typing and selecting, if you want to select a location, assign music, whatever it is, you scroll to the bottom, it'll say, where do you want to share this? Do you also want to cr cross post it to the other place as well? Yeah. So it is just a click of a button. And usually too, once you've done it once, it might just start doing it automatically as well. So that's the beauty of these two platforms. You really don't have to do twice the work. You really can hit both platforms with just one post in one of them or the other. So, and with the scheduling too, like you could just say, I'm sitting down once a month, I'm scheduling out posts for every two or three days or what, however frequency you want. And um, it ought to be that organized. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's where your social media tips come in though. You can sit down <laughs> with your fresh list and be like, Oh, yeah. here we are. We got this day coming, that day coming. And, um, you know, so, and you could do that. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So, all right. Anything else? No, thank you very much. All right. Thank Good. you guys for coming. Thank you. Spending your I evening. Think someone had, a, someone have a question? Yes, I have a question. Oh, okay. Are, are we are we allowed to use TikTok? Pam? I haven't heard anybody say no. Okay, good. I know we've was, talked about it for it us. was an issue in the past, but if no one oh, remembers really? it, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll plead ignorance. Yeah. I, 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 I no, yeah. We'll yeah. clip the video to cut this out so we, nobody knows, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Go for All it. Right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you've been wonderful. Have a Thank good day. You.